Hello everyone, I am Janak Ahasti from Nepal. Welcome to you all on Janak Lecture Series. For more updates, subscribe my YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash Janak Lecture. Hit a like on my Facebook page www.facebook.com slash Janak Lecture. In this lecture, we will deal with general anesthesia. We will talk about the classification of general anesthesia, different principles and goals of general anesthesia. We will be dealing with anesthetic protocol, different theories regarding the mechanism of action of general anesthesia. We will also deal with different stages of general anesthesia and finally we will talk about the properties of the ideal anesthetic. So let's proceed. Before talking about the anesthesia, well, let's have a review of the nervous system. The nervous system, it can be classified into central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Which com central nervous system comprises of the brain and the spinal cord, whereas the peripheral nervous system it consists of the nerves which arise from the brain and the spinal cord. In summarized form, it consists of the cranial nerves and the peripheral nerves. So the anesthesia which act on the central nervous system, that means which act on the brain and the spinal cord, they are known as general anesthesia. It is so because it shows the generalized effect. Whereas the anesthesia which act on the peripheral nervous system, they act locally. That's why the anesthesia acting on the peripheral nervous system, they are known as the local anesthesia. Talking about the classification of the anesthesia, as I talked that the anesthesia it can be classified on the basis of the action of the location. So it can be classified as a general anesthesia which is acting on the central nervous system and the local anesthetic which act on the peripheral nervous system. And there are some drugs which are given prior to general anesthesia. They are known as the pre-anesthetic medications. So we will be dealing with the general anesthesia. This general anesthesia can be broadly classified into inhale anesthetic and the intravenous anesthetic. So these are the different drugs. We will deal with the detailed classification of this general anesthetic. So let's have a look of it. So the general anesthetic it can be classified into inhalation anesthetic and intravenous anesthetic. In inhalation anesthetic as well we have two categories of the volatile liquids and the gases. So volatile liquids includes the anesthetic like ether, halothen, influrin, isoflurane, desflurane and servoflurane. And gaseous anesthetic include nitrous oxide. Similarly, category of the intravenous anesthetic, it can be classified into two broad categories of the inducing agent and slow acting anesthetic. The inducing agents include the drugs like thiopentone, methoxetone, propofol, and etomidate. Whereas the slow acting anesthetic, it can be further classified into other subcategories like the categories of benzodiazepine which includes the drug like diazepam, lorazepam and midazolam. And there are other group of drug like dissociative anesthesia which includes the drug ketamine. And the category of offered analgesia include fentanyl, alfentanyl, sufentanyl and remifentanyl. Similarly, alpha 2 adrenergic agonists they are also acting as the slower acting intravenous anesthetic which includes the drugs like clonidine and dexmethidomine median. Have you seen this movie? The movie Awake. This movie it irresponsibly claims that 1 in 700 patients under general anesthesia are awake for entire surgery. But that's totally false. The definition of the general anesthesia it clearly states that the general anesthetic are the drugs that produce a generalized reversible depression of the central nervous system so that the perception of all sensation is removed. So being anesthetized is the drug induced reversible loss of consciousness. Ether was the first general anesthesia that was used clinically. So the principles of the general anesthesia that include Minimizing the potentially harmful direct and indirect effects of anesthetic agents and techniques. 
sustaining physiological homeostasis during surgical procedure. Third principle includes improving post-operative outcomes of the general anesthesia. So the goals of the surgical anesthesia is to remove the pain perception by inducing the loss of the consciousness and with the help of that the pain perceptions are removed and the pain and suffering is reduced or that is null. Similarly, analgesics, analgesia or the surgical anesthesia also includes the group of a drug that induce the muscle relaxation so that the motor reflexes are lost. Similarly, it also have to stabilize the autonomic reflexes. So these are the different goals of the surgical anesthesia. Surgical anesthesia, anesthesia should remove pain perception, it should reduce motor reflexes and it should also reduce the autonomic reflexes. And this all components of the anesthesia, these all goals of the anesthesia that cannot be achieved by a single anesthetic agent. That's why the anesthetic protocol includes the drug for pre-medications which are given prior to the anesthetic agents and before anesthesia the inducing anesthetic are given like thiopentone and then the third protocol includes the maintenance of anesthesia skeletal muscle relaxation, relaxation that is the another protocol and analgesia pre during and post medication of surgery and the protocol also includes the drugs which reverse the neuromuscular blockade anti-emetic agents and drugs to reduce reversible effects of opioids and benzodiazepine drugs so these are the anesthetic protocol so anesthetic it is so because the single anesthetic drug cannot cannot produce all the aforementioned goals that's why the anesthetic protocol include all these drugs to produce the balance anesthesia so now talking about the components of the anesthesia they are like this the components of the anesthesia include that the drugs must be able to induce hypnosis which means the loss of consciousness there must be the reversible loss of consciousness or sensation by the drug the drug must induce amnesia that is the loss of memory it must induce analgesia which means the loss of perception of pain the drug must induce immobility so that the motor reflexes are lost the drug must ensue, induce the relaxation of the skeletal muscle and the drug must be quick acting and the elimination time should be rapid and the drugs should not have any toxic effects that is it must have the large margin of safety so the drugs that are used to induce the surgical anesthesia must have this components and this components of a drug in combination produce the balance anesthesia so drugs like benzodiazepine they are used to relieve anxiety drugs of the barbiturate group they are used to induce sedations. Similarly, the drugs of antihistamine group, they are used to prevent allergic reactions. And the anti-emetic groups of drugs, they are used to prevent the aspirations of the stomach contains and nausea and vomiting. Similarly, the anticholinergic agents, they are used to prevent bradycardia, secretions of fluid into the respiratory tract. Similarly, the muscle relaxations are relaxants are used to facilitate of the to facilitate the intubations and relaxation of the muscles. So these are the different groups of the drugs they are used to produce the balance anesthesia. So these are the different components of the balance in the anesthesia, including the drugs used for the different components. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the general anesthesia in general. On the upcoming lecture, we'll talk about the individual mechanism of action of a drug. But over here, we'll talk about the generalized action of a general anesthesia. So first theory is the lipid theory. That lipid theory 
it is based on the fact that anesthetic action is correlated with the oil gas coefficient which is which means that higher the solubility of anesthetic in oil greater is the anesthetic potency so in this graph we have shown the lipophilicity and the anesthetic potency so greater is the lipophilicity of this agent greater is the anesthetic potency so depending upon this fact that the chloroform having the higher lipophilicity that is having the higher oil gas coefficient it has got the highest anesthetic property so this theory claims that higher the lipophilicity of a drug higher is the anesthetic potency and according to this theory the general anesthesia it acts by expanding the membrane disproportionately by closing the ion channel so it rests in between the lipid bilayers and expand the membrane so with this expansion the ion channels present in this bilayer membrane of the plasma membrane they are closed so ion influx and efflux are closed and that's why it results in the hyperpolarization of the cell membrane and there is no action potential induced resulting in the resulting in that results now into the inexcitability of a cell but it is the irrelevant theory and disregarded and next theory is the protein theory or the receptor theory it is based on the fact that anesthetic potency is correlated with the ability of anesthetic to inhibit enzyme activity of a pure proteins and it also attempts to explain that gaba a receptor is a potential target for anesthetic action so here we have shown the general anesthetic molecule that binds with this receptor and alters the influx of ion or efflux of ion through this receptor and results in the anesthetic action and there are different recent uh, theories which claims the action of the general anesthesia in better way the first one is the ligand gated ion channel theory according to this theory the general anesthesia that act on the central nervous system by modifying the electrical activity of neuron at molecular level by modifying functions of ion channels so according to this theory the general anesthesia it alters the activity of a ion channel and that's why the electrical activity of the neurons in the central nervous system are altered and they are inhibited the or say due to the inhibition of electrical activity the neurons are inexcitable and that reduce in the perception of the or the activity of the neurons and pain perception there is next theory or the next recent study it claims that the general anesthesia causes the depression of the activity of reticular formation so this reticular formations are the diffuse systems of the neuron in the brain stream and this activation of this reticular formation keeps the patient or the keeps the person awake or it maintains the consciousness so inhibits so the general anesthesia it inhibits the function of the excitatory receptor the excitatory receptor they act through the glutamate acetylcholine and serotonin so activity of this neurotransmitters they are altered by the general anesthesia so general anesthesia so that the excitatory responses are inhibited and the general anesthesia also causes the enhancement of the function of the inhibitory receptors which utilizes the neurotransmitters like gaba or glycine so enhancement of this inhibitory neurotransmitter causes the depressions of the reticular activity in one way the general anesthesia is inhibiting the excitatory receptors and on the other hand it is also enhancing the inhibitory receptors resulting in the depression of the reticular formation and ultimately the central nervous system here we can see the plasma membrane and the ion channel present over here which is specific for the chloride channel and the gaba receptor it binds to this chloride channel and open this channel leading into the influx of a chloride and influx of a chloride results in the 
hyperpolarization of the plasma membrane hyperpolarized is the plasma membrane and lesser is the excitability of a cell resulting in the inhibition of the cell excitability so when the anesthesia here we have shown the inhaled anesthetic but let's generalize about talking saying that the anesthesia so anesthesia bind with the receptor and the activity of a GABA is more enhanced see with the help of that there is greater influx of a chloride channel and entry of a chloride ion hyperpolarizes the cell making it more difficult to depolarize and therefore reduces the neural excitability so with the binding of the anesthesia what happens is that there is more influx of a chloride channel by increasing the activity of a neurotransmitter GABA so that the cell becomes more inexcitable that's why resulting in the depressions of the neuron and ultimately the depression of the central nervous system and the recent theory also claims that certain general anesthetic they act through the NMDA receptor and this NMDA receptor it is the excitatory receptor which utilizes the neurotransmitter glutamate so ketamine like a general anesthetic which bind to the intracellular site of the receptor and alter act antagonist of the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate so that the cell become inexcitable and the theory recent theory also claim that this NMDA receptor can also be a target for the nitrous oxide but this volatile anesthetic have little action on this NMDA receptor and the general anesthesia also act through the hyperpolarization by opening the potassium channels so influx of the potassium channel into the cell causes the hyperpolarization of the cell and general anesthesia is also claimed that it acts through through its action on the hippocampus resulting in the amnesia now we are going to talk about the different stages of the general anesthesia so it was defined in 1920 by Arthur E Gudel on the basis of the responses to ether. So there are four different stages. We'll talk about these four different stages one by one. So in stage one, it is also known as induction stage. It is the period between the initial administration of the induction agent and loss of consciousness. During this stage, the patient progresses from analgesia without amnesia to analgesia with amnesia. The patient can carry on conversation at this time and this stage can be utilized for minor operative procedures like tooth extraction, abscess venous, etc. Now let's talk about stage 2 which is also known as excitement stage and it is the most dangerous period in the anesthesia. It is so because the body shows the combative behavior. So it is the period following loss of consciousness and marked by excited and delirious activity. So during this stage, the respiration and heart rate, blood pressure that becomes irregular and there is the risk of laryngoespasm. In addition, there may be uncontrolled movement, vomiting, breath holding and pupillary dilation. So rapidly acting drug to minimize the time duration in stage 2 are used so that there may be the jumping from directly from stage 1 to stage 3 so that the combative behavior of the body can be skipped. So that is the another property of the general anesthesia. It must skip the stage 2. There is another stage that is stage 3. It is known as surgical anesthesia stage. During this stage, the skeletal muscle relax and the patient becomes regular in breathing, eye movement slows, then stop and surgery can begin. 
So this is stage 3, it can be divided into four planes. The plane 1, it includes the symptoms like the eyes are initially rolling and then become fixed. In plane 2, there is a loss of corneal and laryngeal reflex. In plane 3, the pupils are dilated and there is loss of light reflex. In plane 4, the intercostal muscle paralyzed are paralyzed. There is shallow abdominal respiration and there are dilated pupils. So in stage 3, the plane 3 is preferred for the anesthesia. So the surgical procedure are performed in space 3 and plane 3. So it is an important point to remember. The surgical and surgical procedures are carried in stage 3 and plane 3. Stage 4 is also known as overdose. It is a state, stage where too much medication has been given relative to the amount of surgical stimulation. The patient has severe brainstem or medullary depression. This results in cessation of respiration and potential cardiovascular collapse. This stage is lethal without cardiovascular and respiratory support. So the ideal general anesthetic should result in induction of stage 3 as rapidly as possible and careful monitoring is required to prevent progression into stage 4. So this is the important point to remember that the drug must induce directly, it must induce jumping from stage 1 to 3 and we must be careful to prevent the patient passing into stage 4 because it is the dangerous stage. So this chart shows the overall changes in the different parameters during the different stages. So the respiration, the intercostal respiration and diaphragmatic respiration that is normal in stage 1, it becomes irregular in stage 2 and then becomes regular in plane 1 of stage 3 and the intercostal respiration it gradually becomes shallow and we can see over here the diaphragmatic respiration in plane 3 of stage 3 it becomes shallow and at this plane the surgical procedure can be carried out and then later on gradually the diaphragmatic respiration also it gets diminished and the, it results in apnea and there may occur the death of the patient because of the holding of breath and the ocular moment the it can be eye can be controlled voluntarily and there is gradual loss in voluntary control and at plane 2 there is no eye movement and when we talk about the pupil size the pupil size is normal in stage 1 it becomes dilated in stage 2 that is body is showing the combative behavior which again becomes normal in plane 1 of stage 3 and the people undergo meiosis but later on in the stage 4 we can see the people it becomes dilated similarly the eye reflexes they are they are normal in stage 1 similarly in stage 2 the lead reflexes is lost and in plane 1 of stage 2 3 the corneal reflex is lost and gradually in plane 3 the pupillary light reflex is lost and we can perform the surgery over here and gradually the right reflexes are also lost in plane 4 and finally stage 4 if it, it is proceeded then it results in death. Similarly the muscle tone it is also normal in stage 1 and in stage 2 the muscle tone becomes tense and gradually the muscle tone diminishes and becomes flaccid in stage 4. And the respiratory response to skin incision that is gradually diminished and at the end of the plane 2 of stage 3 there is no response to respiratory response to skin incision. So these are the overall changes that occurs in the human body during the different stages of the general anesthesia. Now let's talk about the properties of the ideal anesthetic. For patient the drug should be pleasant, non-irritating and it should not cause nausea or 
vomiting and the general anesthesia if the induction and the recovery should be fast with no after effect so these are the ideal properties for the patient similarly the for the surgeon the properties are like this would provide adequate analgesia immobility and muscle relaxation this would be non inflammable and non explosive and for the anesthetist the administration should be easy controllable and versatile and the drug should have large margin of safety and it should not cause any effects on heart liver and other organs organs and the drug should be potent it should be cheap stable and easily stored so these are the different properties of the ideal anesthetic for patient for surgeon and for the anesthetic so this much for now thank you very much for watching